Well, you know what? Fuck y'all. I'm gonna read this loud and proud, out and about. Hello, hello. Here to tell you. Oh. I guess I should do it. What am I doing? Sorry. I'm gonna have to redo this. Hello, it's Thursday. Some book updates. Last night we finished Raven Smith's Men. Finally, I feel like I took way too long with this one for good cause. I, I feel like I spent a really long week with a friend. Okay, I wanna do two things. I wanna read you my Goodreads review because I spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> and I think it's like crafted beautifully. But I also wanna say that there's a lot in here. If you are trying to get over a guy or sick of men or need a really good laugh, Raven Smith's got you. He jumps from why you shouldn't invite misogynists to dinner, ghosting, how to put up with men, how to work with men, if you're all in the same workplace. He covers everything about men. He covers daddy issues. He, co he covers everything. Can I read you this portion though? There's this uh, portion where he does like a 72 hour juice cleanse. I'm a pragmatic person, a realist. I understand the importance of not removing all the fiber from your fruits, but sometimes I just down celery juice unquestioningly, mainly to feel goop rich. The part of me that thinks this is ho come has been silenced. I want to believe, cleanse me, I said to my urns of foliage, baptize my innards with this liquid spinach. Turmeric will aid my rebirth, my ascension. It is now day three and I am both jubilant and suicidal. Suicidal is an overstatement, but I've been on the verge of a scream for 72 hours, bubbling up in me from my hollowed out juice only body. Apparently my dislike of loopholes has a limit. Sometimes you do have to cheat the system. Over the course of 18 juices and as much water as I can stomach, I have fantasized about the primal crunch of hard food to the point of near masturbation, visualizing my dick nestled in the crisp shell of a taco. My imagination ran wild. He just has delicious prose. He is a crafty wordsmith. He is everything. He's everything you want in stand-up, in a friend, in really good storytelling. Yeah, perhaps my favorite read of 2022. Yeah, I just love this so much very much needed this. But yeah, Raven Smith is, just feels like a friend. Like a really, really good friend. Which brings me to my Goodreads review. Raven Smith is one of those friends you meet up for brunch who is especially tardy and creates a lot of theatrics out of it. But you say, it's fine, it's fine, while your iced Americana waters down to mere bean water. And he begins with last night and its antics with all the drinks and kisses and regrets and one story leaps to another and before the food arrives, you forget you haven't even ordered yet because you were too busy laughing and laughing so hard that your stomach cramps and it's painful but it's the good kind of hurt because the last time you laughed like this was when you were with him late one night long ago in your youth lost out of your goddamn existential mind but it was okay because Raven was your hype man and talked you into kissing a boy you still think about to this day and call it romance and it was romance because at 3 a.m someone with the ox played the strokes and you thought of suicide but you are in such good company that you actually do feel romantic about it all even to this day and so the food is ordered and now you're on bottomless mimosas and it continues like that and it's fun prose i wrote it it's fun you should read it go read it downstairs in the link below. Yeah, Raven Smith's Men. Read it, it's great. It's funny, love Raven Smith. And we have book mail. This way, this way. I'm trying to be careful because hiding my dress. Oh yes, yes. We have Milk Teeth by Jessica Andrews. I just love this cover, look at that. I just loved this cover so much, I needed to pick it up. What is this even about? Girl grows up in northeast of England amid scarcity, precarity, and toxic culture of bodily shame, certain that she must make herself ever smaller to be loved. Yeah, I think uh, we have 
coming of age, female coming of age. Yes, should be good. Excited to read this. Yeah, just that cover, look at that. So tantalizing, so erotic. Rebirth, I'm getting a lot out of this. And this like baby blue font, name in white. It's just gorgeous. I don't know what fruit that is. I think it's some kind of fruit, but yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Not much else to update, still reading Bliss Montage. I feel like I'm just a broken record talking about all of this, but I also feel like I need to do reviews after I finished reading them. I don't know. Anyway, sorry if this all feels jumbled in the editing. <sighs> or I should just wait. I should just wait. I should just wait until I have like a collective of books I finished. I don't know how people do this. Is that why people do like monthly wrap ups? I guess so. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should focus more on monthly wrap ups. But then I wouldn't have like real book content. Cause what I do is I put out a video once a week and that week kind of like tracks all of my reading habits. I feel like that's good, right? That's good content. Or maybe people just want the monthly wrap ups. I don't know. Anyone can help me out. What would you like? What would you like to see from my channel? Or more of? What am I not doing that you would want me to be doing? Yes, I'm here for the community. I'm here to speak. Let me know. Thanks. Hi, hello. I'd like to admit here and now that I've been a complete idiot. I've been filming in 1080 this entire time when I had the option to do 4K, like front facing 4K. I'm an idiot. <laughs> anyway, super dark today because it is a gloomy, rainy Friday. It seems we are still in monsoon season and I am sick of it sick of it. Thankfully, it's not as humid as it has been. I think the humidity is starting to leave, so that's good. In my last hour of work, I finished Heaven by Miyako Kawakami. Big oof, like good oof. I, I love this. I loved this. Incredibly beautiful. I cannot unsee how much this feels like a Shunji Iwai film. If anyone doesn't know, Shunji Iwai is this Japanese film director who makes like quintessential teen angsty Japanese films because he's Japanese. I use Japanese way too many times in that sentence. If you've seen All About Lily Choo Choo, incredible. Hannah and Alice, incredible. Reminds me very much of one of his films, this book. We're dealing with a kid who has a lazy eye and develops this relationship with a girl who stinks all the time, Kojima. They've developed this beautiful relationship where they almost hide into themselves and create these safe spaces within to each other. And it becomes this very beautiful platonic relationship that you wish you had as a teenager when if anyone's been a victim of bullying, I really wish I had someone like, what's her name? Kojima. <laughs> I keep forgetting her name. Sorry, terrible with names. She's that one friend that you wish you had that would save you from your own sadness. And they have beautiful moments together. There's this excruciatingly beautiful moment um, during the summer where they go to a museum and they look at art and they look at the titles and try and match it with the images and how they don't and oh, a beautiful haircut scene and it and I'm in summer so it just it just resonated so beautifully for me and it was just so tender and there's just the prose is very lyrical as well and that's why I really emphasize how much this feels like a Shunji Uai film because he does the same tactic but through almost like these slow-mo montages of sorts that just capture adolescence so well. He understands teenagers and Mieko here, though 
these children sometimes dip into these like philosophical meanderings they feel they feel like true teenagers things i thought about with the topic of bullying was the questions of how the body is a verb how it acts and what it acts on i'm thinking of the scene where our narrator meets with one of his aggressors by the hospital and talks about why he bullies. This isn't spoiling anything, by the way, but that whole scene and sort of the philosophical debate they have on people and morality and actions is incredible. And gosh, that ending too, the ending. Ugh, oh, I, I guess by ending, I mean the rain scene when they're both in the mud and in the rain, and as well as just the very end of the book. Just incredible moments. I loved this a lot. Also, I didn't mind that the middle meandered a bit because again, like a Shunji Wai film, it isn't so much about plot. It's about how these two characters come together to build a bond and how that bond is tested its trials and tribulations and how they come out of it, if they come out of it. And yeah, we get that here between our narrator and um, Kojima. <laughs> I keep forgetting her name. It really left me with some questions. How are we hurting each other? How can we hurt each other less? Is every micro movement of mine an attempt to harm or help? My words, my choices, my very body, my very eye and how it sees. The rest on my Goodreads, but provocative. I really enjoyed this. The, mo the moments where it does get intense are really intense. Like I winced, I remember, when he really got that big beating in the middle of the book. It never felt like torture porn. I know I was reading some of the reviews to collect my thoughts and saw that some of it was like too intense to the point of torture porn which I don't think is necessarily true given that Mieko is really crafted in that she's skillful in inserting moments of nature and how incredibly beautiful it is and moments of intimacy and how there's this balance between the violence and sort of the beauty and tenderness of life and really both of them have a firm handshake with each other throughout this book. I think Kawakami does a very good job of describing it all, where it feels so real. And that's where I applaud her as a writer for making it feel so real. But yes, incredible, loved this. I cannot wait to get my hands on breast and eggs. What is that other one, Miss Ice Cream Sandwich? I want to read that one as well, but the cover is just so... Blase. I just can't with that cover. This is a lazy cover. Who did that? Whose choice was that? Anyway, oh, I also want to note that I think Miyako does a better job resonating with teenagers than she does with middle-aged people or like new adults is a term I want to use for like late 20-something year olds. So I'm excited, I think, Breast and Eggs is about a teenager. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. What am I still reading? I'm still reading Bliss Montage. I'm halfway through, enjoying it. I, I think I keep saying the same things over and over, so I'm gonna have to edit this somehow. Guess what? Brought out the old little Kindle. Bliss Montage, there we go. Ugh, oh, missed this thing. It just, when I first discovered Libby, I was really intrigued by the Kindle and I used it constantly. I was like, I'm a minimalist. I don't need physical books. And then just after a while, I got tired of it because I just missed having like sexy covers in my hands. Yeah, this died for like a good year. There was like, a, I think it was a year I just didn't use it at all. But yeah, picked it up again because I don't know. I, I was like, ugh, my... I usually read off the Kindle app off of my iPad mini, but that I just don't feel comfortable bringing around, especially when it's raining. And this one, 
yeah, it's like the perfect size. Fits in my bagu perfectly. And yeah, battery runs very well. Tons of juice on this thing. I'm reading that. And I think I might, since I'm 50% of the way through, I think throughout this week, or this weekend and the next, I'm going to start Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Happy My Mom Died. TikTok got a chokehold on me. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna read it so I have it already on my Kindle and excited to read that as well. I wanted a physical copy, but uh, I, need, I need a paperback. They only have hardback. Also the hardback's like 30 bucks. Ugh. Can't do that, can't justify that. And we got book mail. Loving these like book a day. It's like Christmas every single day. And our lucky winner today is... Ooh, yes, yes, yes. I imagine this was gonna be a little like pulp fiction size. <laughs> But look, we got The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. Been meaning to read this since like 2016. I think now's the time. I think I was saying something about the death of transgressive literature. So felt like I needed to go back in time and pick something up from when it used to be cool. Still is cool. Um, but yeah, look at that cover. So great. Can't wait to read this on public transit. I am gonna get a shit ton of looks for this one. I think this one's worse than Sex and Rage. What I loved about carrying Sex and Rage was the amount of couples that would pass by and give me like weird looks. Cause every time I was reading it, I was reading it alone. <laughs> like I, I had no one around me. Cause I, I usually read when I'm waiting for someone at the train station. And I was, yeah, waiting for my friend and ton of couples just passed by and saw me reading that all by my lonesome self. Well, you know what? Fuck y'all. I'm gonna read this loud and proud, out and about. The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. Set largely on the pages of a website where gay male escorts are reviewed by their clients and told through the postings, emails, and conversations of several dozen unreliable narrators, The Sluts chronicles the evolution of one young escort's dates with a satisfied client into a metafiction of pornography, lies, half-truths, and myth. Now, doesn't that sound absolutely wild? Yes, The Sluts, Dennis Cooper, excited to read it. I really need to be crafty crafty about my autumn reads. I was supposed to do that today, but decided to finish Heaven by Michael Kawakami. I think that was the better choice, but uh, yeah. I spent two full weekends in Seoul and I just want to be a shut-in. <laughs> so probably gonna work on that list over the weekend on my Notion. And yeah, keep it chill, keep it in the city. Summer is officially over for me. And now it's womp womp time. That's it, I hope you're doing well. Let me know what you're reading. Be well, do good work, keep in touch. Hello, it's a Saturday and the humidity is not bad. We're in like mid eighties. This is the fit. I'm not quite sure if this bag is doing it. It looks a little odd against my frame. We'll see. But yeah, gotta do some work and yes, going to bask in the sun. Going to a cafe that's like 500 meters away from me. I originally thought it was like a couple kilometers, but it's quite near. So let's go.